What's going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the abusing Thor action. As your Thor abuser for today, his name is Borg. His opponent today, the challenger to Thor's reign in the red color, playing as Poseidon. His name is Magic. The map is Watering Hole. And this is going to be a very challenging one for Magic. And I think I'm starting to understand more and more about what I don't like about Poseidon and what makes me want to put Poseidon on the bottom of the tier list. So Poseidon has a terrible matchup into Norse. What makes him so bad into Norse? Well, his big advantage is cavalry and the cavalry and the counter cavalry that Norse have just shuts Poseidon out of the game. So Poseidon has to be very, very tricky in order to find wins against the Norse player. And when I'm, I, I can say, sure, I can make a case for Poseidon being tricky and being able to beat a Norse player. But if the Norse player catches wind to the trickery, is thinking well, is countering their opponent in a big way, then guess what happens? That Poseidon player's trickery ends up not being that strong and stops working. Nonetheless, we do have Magic playing Poseidon. And if there's anyone who can pilot Poseidon to a level that can deal with the strength of Thor, it's going to be Magic. Now, he is up against Borg, and I've played Borg myself. And I'm going to tell you, he's a strong player. But he has an affinity to the horse unit. He likes a good horse, just like the next guy likes a good horse. And that can be a Norse player's undoing. If they are not willing to respect their opponent's unit composition and make something not named a horse, they might find themselves getting into some trick, uh, tricky positions, some sticky situations here. As the uh, gazelles getting whacked in. And if we take a look at Borg right now, he's dropped his armory, and this is all he knows right now. Uh, and this is the weakness to this build order which Borg is doing. It is, he doesn't get anything. In terms of scouting and magic at them at this moment he is going for a very fast classical age temple is up on the back i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say i don't like this the reason i don't like this fast advance here from magic and i'm not saying that it's bad i'm just saying personally i'm not going to be doing this strategy because i don't think i can get enough damage with this magic on the other hand he is a different sort of beast, and he might be able to find the damage with this because he's got that early game killer instinct, which personally I lack. Um, and we'll see how things are going to go. You're my hero, says. All are bad versus Norse because Norse is always public favorite, and devs do not want to rub their customers the wrong way. <laughs> That's a take if I've ever heard one. I will say that Egyptian is perfectly fine versus Norse. I think that Hades is perfectly fine versus Norse. Maybe even Zeus is perfectly fine versus Norse. I think that Atlantean arguably is perfectly fine versus Norse. That's just Poseidon that's really struggling and maybe a couple of other like minor, uh, major gods inside of a civilization. It's not the entire roster that's struggling against Norse. But we do see the Centaur moving across the map here. Borg, a little bit late to the classical age, I would say. I know that it's possible to get a 4-15 um, with Norse. And you can see how long it takes this Centaur to get into the enemy base here. And you have to start getting damage done immediately here. Uh, what makes a god good against another god? Well, there's two things. So first thing is, is there a unit or units which are... Oh, good snipe there from Magic. That pays for his advance in spades. And like I said, I wouldn't get that dwarf kill. But Magic does. Because he is Magic. Um, so what makes a god better than another god? Well, in this, in this specific, specific... I can't speak. In this specific situation... In this specific situation... Norse has got all the answers to what Poseidon has. He's got uh, Herbman to kill off the Hippias. He's got Raiding Cavalry to kill off any Toxoid. He's got the speed to counter the Hippias with his own Raiding Cavalry, which is what he wants to do. Um, there's a lot, but we do see a really fast second town center for Magic. 
which I absolutely love as well. So with this fast advance comes a fast second town center, which is perfectly reasonable as the Atlanta coming in, gonna get a couple of shots off onto the Valkyrie here as they will start retreating away. Atlanta in hot pursuit, not gonna be able to catch up to this one. Uh, I think you can, if you micro it, if you get one shot onto the Valkyrie with Atlanta, I'm pretty sure you can kill the Valkyrie, but you have to micro it and cancel the animation of the Atlanta to chase that one down. Otherwise, it's going to get to its sixth speed. You're not going to be able to chase it up. Another example of a, of a certain Civ advantage over another Civ is Egyptian versus Norse. Now, the Norse need infantry units to build buildings, which means that they have to build infantry units. Which therefore means that the Egyptian player can make their Axemen, which hard counter infantry units. And that can be enough of an advantage to sway the course of a game a lot of the times. And there's a lot of little things like that in Age of Mythology, which really end up making a big deal of uh, of everything. As we do see the Atlanta, we wanted to grab that, the Titan Strip. That's a great relic there. It's actually a great relic. There's no, you don't want to leave that relic on the ground. <coughs> 1300 resources you're going to get 130 resources for going to the heroic age and 200 resources for going to the mythic age as i said i'm going to be retreating back magic is now about to get under pressure and honestly magic is doing something that i honestly think is really really challenging to make work and that's going for his fast second town center against norse norse now gets all the initiative in this game plus it's thor who's already been in an advantageous position from the get-go by getting those early dwarves out and right now Borg can choose literally whatever he wants to do he can go for a timing attack he can go for a fast second town center fast third town center behind that as well uh magic basically just has to sit back and just let it happen here because it takes him so long to get everything done and well Borg can just do whatever he wants here and if we take a look at the map Magic's got nothing out on the map. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to just get a Pegasus just to confirm or deny whatever Borg is doing here. But Borg now going to give away his army size and exactly what is happening. And Magic can start thinking about what's coming his way. As the villagers going to be diving into the town center here. Centaur are going to get sniped down here as well. As Atlanta and Theseus going to need to turn around and target down that Valkyrie really, really shortly here. So many units in for Borg. Lots of villagers garrison in. We see watchtowers coming through. These units are going to get really ripped to shreds underneath this town center. I do not like this attack from Borg. One way shape of one iota here at the moment. As we'll see if magic can defend this one remember this town center with 10 villages in it is doing 18 times 2 36 pierce damage a second it is hitting like an absolute truck you might think that these towers aren't doing very much but every single one of these towers is shooting right now and if the units are standing still they're doing eight damage a second so that's a grant that's a grand total of 8 16 24 plus the 36 that this was doing which is absolutely huge and Borg just kind of throws away any sort of advantage he might have had in this game with that attack. Now, one ad one small thing that he can take away from that and say, great, I got that, is that he idled 10 villages for that fight, which may or may not be a good thing. Might, might be significant, might not. Villagers over here are going to be getting targeted down, but Magic is very quick on the retreat. He manages to get into that town center over there. The Hoplites are on this position as well in an attempt to take out those Valkyries. And we'll see how things are going to go here. As the Raiding Cavalry are going to move up on in, into the middle of the map. And Borg is searching for villager kills. One, like, one thing that I absolutely love from Magic's base design here is he leaves little room. He leaves a little bit of room for his opponent to go wrong. Now, this is something that probably advanced players might want to try. The lower level players, you just want to get your base all walled off. But as we see a big forest fire coming down, and Borg is going to be opening up Magic's base even more. But Magic defending well so far. He pulls back to the town center. He can garrison into that town center if he so chooses. Does decide to turn around. Uh, but definitely garrisoning into that one would keep all his units alive. Villagers are actually getting taken out here as Borg is charging in yet again. He sees 
He sees blood, he sees an advantage, and he's going for it, and his army is very, very strong. He picked up all of those Toxodes there as Magic is pulling back. He's got Hoplites as Poseidon, which I absolutely love. You see all of those raiding cavalry are out here for Borg. Great little building block there with the armory going down, as Magic looks like he wants to get to that Heroic Age here as well. Magic defends. He does take a little bit of a damage on that attack, but he's at 56 villages. To finish the point before... The thing that Magic does really nicely here, he leaves little bits of space in his in his base here, and he's probably going to clean those up later, is it allows his opponent to go wrong. If they run into his base, he's going to be able to defend against that sort of thing and actually pick up a lot of units for it. It's one thing to, to, to raid, but you also have to get an efficient raid off. And if you're on the defensive side, the two-town center side, you can't raid your opponent. So the way to deal damage to your opponent is to let them raid you and make it a bad raid. As we do see a villager almost getting sniped down there, but the Valkyrie decides to turn around on that one as Borg coming back into the center of the map here. And we'll see how he's going to go as Villager's going to be dropping down farms on this position here. How much does he have? He doesn't have Plow just yet, but he's getting that one through as well as Copper, Mail, Husbandry in as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see Borg going next age relatively soon. He does have that armory up already. Lots and lots of gold in the bank. Uh, but he can... Is he building villages? Wow. He could keep building gatherers at this point, but he wants those... Uh, sorry, dwarves at this point, but he wants those gatherers out for whichever reason. Or he can throw a market down, buy some food, and rush to that heroic age, which is going to be a big, big advantage. But while this is all going on, Magic kind of knows that if he gets to the heroic age himself here, he's going to be in for a very, very good advantage as he does get himself a big sell on that market. And now he's going to be advancing through Aphrodite. Really, really nice play here for... Uh, for magic, but this will allow Borg a little bit of a a little bit of a timing here to put some pressure onto magic. Magic's got his farms up over here. Borg's not going to care about those th that town center here at all. And there's too many villages. They've, th he's gonna he's only got 25 spots he can garrison into the town center at the moment. But he does keep these villages on the back idle as the hoplites coming through onto this position. We see those toxodes coming through here as well. Magic might need to hit ceasefire in this position because those Toxodes are under a lot of pressure there from those raiding cavalry able to absolutely clean them up meanwhile the hoplites as well are going to be taking a huge amount of damage from those Toxodes uh, from those throwing axe from their great micro from Borg splitting Magic's army up hitting this timing perfectly as Aphrodite is on the way and now Magic is in a really really tough position here he still has that ceasefire but he's going to just continue to run away hoplites on the bottom here getting sniped down as well here as Magic has to just turn around and sack the rest of those Hoplites, trying to get at least a decent trade in onto those raiding cavalry. As now Magic is down to 800 uh, military resource value, but he does manage to hit the next age, and that will give him Curse, which will give him a little bit of reprieve, plus he gets himself the Nemean Lion here, and he's going to be able to get some Hapaspis through and Prodromus, which are going to start hard countering this Borg army. So what Borg needs is Herbman. He needs Herbin now, and he also needs to continue uh, ensuring that he takes really, really good fights here as the Nemean Lion comes in, collects a couple of these units. Borg's going to have to retreat back. He's found himself a significant advantage with the military. But he's 20, he's 20 villages behind Magic here. So he needs to convert this military edge into something. Whether that means diving onto villages, whether that means getting himself two town centers, whether that means... I don't know, trying to get himself with 2k resources does mean he can get to the heroic age and still be kind of equal on military here, uh, or at least um, still in front on military, I should say. Uh, so he's got to pick an angle here, and he is going through Bragi, so this might be it, but there is still going to be flaming weapons uh, remaining here at the moment. As Magic trying to push forward, not able to get all too much done there. As we do see a Nemean Lion popping out here for magic. More Nemean Lions, the better. As he does dive straight in, not going to be able to get all too much done there. He does have a very strong army, but now with Borg hitting that heroic age, where to next for magic is the big question. He's still got a he's still got the economic advantage. He's back up to nearly he's nearly full population. He's nearly gone equal with Borg. Borg's still one town center. One town center full send is Borg's 
modus operandi at the moment here as he is trying to get every little bit of damage done possible. He doesn't want a boomy game. He doesn't want a game full of decisions and where to attack, where not to attack. He wants to full send down Magic's throat in this game. But Magic has mustered up an army which looks very, very scary for Borg. Borg's going out to these buildings. A little bit of damage doesn't matter all that much. We see a fortress coming up in the main base here for Magic. Magic's also got a gold mine up here, which he is getting. He is very lucky to be mining that gold mine at the moment. Borg, does he even know about it? He does know there's a gold mine there. So he can move up onto that position. There is a gold mine down the bottom side of the map there as well. As an Indian lion pushes forward, gets a whole bunch of stun there. Flaming weapons comes in. Magic gonna be retreating. All he has to do is wait 15 seconds before he clicks that ceasefire, and that flaming weapons is done. As the army is gonna continue to chase forward, gets a little bit of damage done. Magic could ceasefire right now, and it wouldn't be a terrible idea, but he's gonna wait exactly for 30 seconds before hitting ceasefire, and there he goes. Cancels the flaming weapons out. Borg is in a very, very tough position now. He's got no flaming weapons left. He's got 84 favor in the bank, so he can't click that flaming weapons again. Magic is in a great position now. He's got the villager lead. He's got the army lead. Well, he doesn't have the army lead, but he's got the villager lead. He's got the population lead, so he can start getting those armory up oh, those, those those line upgrades, those armory upgrades, and catching up to Borg's armory as Borg's got medium or heavy Heavy infantry is going to be going for that. Heavy cavalry as well, I'm sure. Very, very shortly. It seems like I've messed up, messed up this top thing on the top. I didn't even notice. Um, excuse me. Alt T. I know, we know about it. It's all good. As the unit's going to be pushing through. Podromus trying their best to take this fight as best as they can. They're going to be able to clean up all of those raiding cavalry as Borg just did not micro in the slightest, but he has a whole bunch of Hursa here. There's no counter for the Hursa in this army as those are going to be able to trade through those heavy Prodromus beautifully well there as Magic needs to retreat back and get back to the drawing board. He needs Toxodes right now, and you can see he knows that as he's queuing those up. Look at the resources in the bank for both players. Tons of wood. Magic needs to drop down like 10 military buildings. Same two here for Borg. If we take a look at it, Borg's got three great halls at the moment. He's got three long houses on the other side of the map. Magic's got five stables, one military academy, four archery rangers. Needs to spend those resources. He is getting armory upgrades as well. Everything is getting spent right now for Magic. I think he sold resources there, no? No, he built farms all at the back there. I don't think he needs farms. I think he needs Toxodes. Look at the army here of, of Borg. Toxodes should absolutely dominate the fight moving forward as we're starting to see Herdman coming through as well for Borg. Borg's played this one really, really nicely in terms of unit composition here. Now he's got that second town center up, but he needs a, he doesn't just need a second town center. He needs a third town center, maybe a fourth town center to catch up on income at the moment because Magic is going to be really, really pulling ahead here if Magic can win a fight. That's the big challenge. Magic just needs to win a fight. We do see a Dwarven gold mine getting dropped down. That's 3,000 gold. That's those villagers all getting a significant boost on gold gather rate there. So that's going to help him out in a big way as Magic's still not happy to take this fight because he doesn't have an army worth using here. Do we see any buildings coming down for Magic? I don't see them anywhere at the moment as Borg continues to push forward forward at the moment. Maybe Peltas wouldn't be a bad idea either. Peltas Toxodi here could be a really, really great way to snipe down all of those drawn axemen from range while the Toxodis can kill off all the herp. And, but Magic here, losing this fight, decides to retreat yet again underneath the town center, underneath the towers. Borg, he hasn't managed to find anything at, in this point of the game to really hurt Magic apart from just killing units. And I think Magic knows that, but what Borg does have is he's got map control. So he can push up to the top side of the map. Claim this gold mine. Wall this off. Wall this off. Put a, a mine out the entirety of this gold mine here. Move over here to mine this gold mine. And Magic is going to run out of gold in this game relatively quickly. He's out of gold mines over here. Uh, he's going to have this gold mine for a little bit longer. So we'll see if Magic is thinking two steps in front, three steps in front right now and realizing what his lose condition is right now because his win condition is simply just not losing villages. His, his lose condition is getting gold starved. Can we check the villager upgrades? Yes, we can. Decent, really, really good upgrades, actually, for Magic. He's got every single one he possibly can. Borg on the other side of the map. No hand axe, no pickaxe. Borg does not care about economy. Zero care for economy, this Borg, at the moment. Toxodes are now out, and look at those starting to shred those Hippaspis. We're also seeing Hippias coming through as well. As 10 Hippias. What is that from Magic? 
I'll say it, even, even to Magic, who's got insanely good macro, if you've ever see in your building queue numbers, build buildings, build military buildings, that's the secret to Age of Mythology macro, uh, and yes, you can you can macro better than that, and then by never having anything queued up like that but and, and just doing it ahead of the time but if you ever get yourself in a, a mistake that's the easiest way to fix it but it does look like as this fight is going on magic is inching in front and now magic's economy is going to be carrying him through in this game borg has got a long way to go to catch up he's got 75 villages so he's behind by 25 but he does have no economic upgrade so he also needs those Plus, he's now going up against that Greek army and magic with Toxodes. You have to mass up a bunch of raiding cavalry to take out these Toxodes again. So Borg has to like completely rebuild his army here to beat this, this army that Magic's um, created. Now the problem here for Magic, very, very slight, is that he doesn't have any Prodromus out anymore. And he is not and, and a full swath of raiding cavalry to come through would be a really, really good fight for Borg here. But while this is going on, we see a town center coming up on the top side of the map there for Magic. And we're also seeing Artemis come through. Magic is going to be squeezing Borg out of this game. And he's not going to be able to do anything about it. Earthquake is going to be game ending at this point for Borg. What can he do to just stop the, 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 uh, the Mythic Age? Not a lot. Fortified Town Center is coming through for Borg. He's trying to spend his resources, but his units are popping out here and just getting absolutely removed from the map here from Magic. And Magic does what Magic does best. Holds, defends, plays beautifully. But, I mean, this was a shaky game from Magic. Borg here, any sort of attention to gold mines, any sort of pressure there would have really made Magic's life hard. There was a point here where Magic was going Heroic Age. Borg... Borg basically had 4,000 resource or military value to Magic's 1,000, and he just didn't move up here to kill this. These walls saved Magic in this game without any real, without any doing anything. Basically, they didn't even do anything. They were just sitting here preventing Borg from running up here, and nothing. It was just a mental block here from Borg. If he just pushes up, pushes Magic off of this gold mine, walls this off, walls this off, then he can start thinking about moving in on trying to hit this gold mine over here, maybe dropping a dock, getting a transport ship and getting over here. And then this game would have been very, very challenging for Magic. But Magic, he never dies and that's how he plays. He is an incredibly good defender in Age of Mythology. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next game.